the flowers flowers again flowers again flowers again let us now welcome prophet thomas on the altar let us clap our hands at once welcome man of god thank you 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 the Lord. Thank you. I, I thought I was going to be here till tomorrow, but I want to preach today. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. Lift your hands to the Lord. Yeah, clap your hands. Let's get on with it, okay? Let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. Look at your neighbor and say, let's get on with it. Look at the person next to you and say, let's get on with it. Oh, yes. I went to a restaurant one time at the airport called Simba Restaurant at the airport after I uh, had prophesied that Kenya would have a new government and they took so long to bring the food I wrote a, a note on the receipt and I gave it to the manager and I said Simba Restaurant order today eat tomorrow <laughs> I was like, no, and I went and f went up in the air, woo, back to Europe, praise the Lord. I like time, I like keeping time. I I'm sorry, I have another meeting, but I'm going to take as much time as I can. Lift your hands to Jesus right now and say, Father, talk to me right now. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. The Lord spoke to me early this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, the Lord spoke to him. Tell the person next to you, the Lord spoke to him. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And the Lord said to me a, a, a statement. He said, son, I want you to speak about doctrinal issues on success in life and life's important issues things that people need to know on how to move to the next dimension in their life how many would like to know what God is saying how many would like to know some secrets the secret of the Lord the secret of <laughs> you have to take authority over everything you know you just have to do it you have to control the atmosphere the secret of the Lord is from, with those who fear him. Uh, Psalm 25. I think it's the 14th verse, somewhere in there. 13, 14th verse. Now, what it means to fear God is that you respect what he respects. Someone say, I respect what God respects. And I hate what God hates. God hates certain things, you know that? And if people are so bad, he can even hate them. You know, God said, Jacob I love, but Esau I hated. Why did God say that? Because Esau was such a bad man. He, he disrespected the covenant and everything. Anyway, I don't, I don't have time to get into that. But we need to respect what God respects. Say hallelujah. Amen. Say, I will love what God loves. And I will hate what God hates. From today, in a greater way, and my life will change. Oh, yes, it will. Now give the Lord a shout right now. So the Lord spoke to me, and, and you want to know what he said? Would you like to know what the Lord said? He said, son, I have things in the Bible that I want my people to know about life's important issues. The issues of life that are important. Really, everything in your life is important. So the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, Solomon, the wise king, said, Hear the instruction of a father. When God wants to talk to us, he talks to us like a father. We need fathers. Lift your hands. Paul said, lift your hands. Paul said, 
Paul said, you have many people, many preachers, many teachers, many churches, what? but very few fathers. We need a father. Someone say, I need a father. Someone say, I need a good dad. A Holy Ghost filled dad. More than him, I need Jesus myself. More than him, I need Jesus myself. Life's important issues are what? How you live, how you succeed in your mission, how you do things according to the, you know, the plan of God, the purpose of God. And the Lord has a pattern. He has patterns. He has systems of operation. Number one, uh, number one thing is time management. You need to manage your time. I know that's a painful thing to talk about. Because if we don't respect time, time doesn't respect us. It just keeps going. One thing every man has on the earth, whether he be poor or very rich, is time, 24 hours in a day. Praise the Lord. Someone say, I have only 24 hours. Say, everybody has 24 hours. And that's all. Nobody has more. So what am I doing within the course of my day? Paul said to Timothy, you need to study to show yourself approved. And then he also said, uh, the word of God is doctrine to be taught. Amen? Amen. I, I want to tell you one thing that if I if I only said this today for you, you'd be you, you if you caught a hold of it, your life could change. The word of God. You have your Bible? Hold your Bible up. I got my Bible here. Hold your Bible up high. You got your Bible? How many have your phone? You have the Bible software. I like that too. I like it. Hold your phone up if you have your Bible on phone. Very good. Tablet, laptop, whatever you got. Bible, your little Bible, big Bible. Hold it up, hold it up. Now hit yourself with it like this. This is my guide to life. Not what song you sing, not how much you uh, get excited about anything. How much you know will determine how far you go. Hello? How much you know about things that will help you succeed will determine how far you go in life. The Lord himself never wanted people to live in poverty. He only wanted people to live to be rich. There's no man that God ordained and called his friend and said, I want you to be poor. No one. The, the Lord said to David, I want to take pleasure in your prosperity. Psalm 35, 27. The Lord said to Solomon, you ask me for wisdom, but I'm also going to give you wealth. I'm going to give you a lot of riches. He asked Abraham to leave his father's house and go out to the new place where God was going to lead him. God said, I like your obedience, son. I'm going to bless you. And the Bible says that in Genesis 12:1. And then in Genesis 13, 2, just one chapter later, in the very first book of the Bible, he said, Abram became very rich. Lift your hands. Say, I'm supposed to be like Abram, like Abraham. Lift your hands. Galatians 3 says, we are the seed of Abraham. And because we belong to Christ, hello? We're Abraham's seed. Yes or yes? See, I don't say true or false. Some people say true or false. I don't do it, no. Because I, when you're right, you're right. I only say yes or yes. Which is it, yes or yes? Which answer, yes or yes? Which answer, yes or yes? Which one? Pick, pick 
one of the two. Jesus said, greater works will you do in John 14, 12 than me. How, how, how? Let me tell you, doctrinally speaking, according to the word of God, no one can ever outdo Jesus in the realm of walking with God, hearing God, fulfilling God's obedience, fulfilling what he wants uh, to happen. No one. So in quality, quality, no one can outdo Jesus. But where we can do more than Jesus is in quantity. Meaning we can reach more people. Now we have the internet. Now we have satellite television. Now we have publishings of books. Now we have mass media. Now we have air, jet airplanes. Hello? We even have helicopters. We have fast cars, fast vehicles. We can move, move, move. And I want to tell you something about God that I learned. He's a God of order, but he's also a God of speed. He's a God of fastness, acceleration, quickness. Everything about him is now, 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 now. Let's go, let's go. If you were to listen to God talk to you as your mentor, he would say, Cut, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Uh, I, I know how to say it. Ha, harakisha. Hello? Hurry up. Twende. Let's go. Tell the devil, Toka Hapa. Quende Uko. And tell the good person, let's go, come on. Kujahapa, let's go, I'm waiting. And hurry up. Hada Kisha, that which thou doest, do as quickly. Even Jesus told the evil man, do what you're going to do fast, don't wait. He told Judas Iscariot, that which you do, are going to do, that which thou are, uh, King James language, ay, yeah, yeah. Let me talk in English. That the thing that you're going to do to betray the master Jesus himself, do it fast. Don't wait. Time is going. I have things to do. I want to get on with the program. If I have to go into the tomb, I'm only going for three days, uh, two and a half days, Friday night, Saturday night to Sunday before the night. He came out before three days, uh, just at three days or just before. And he, they, they, they rolled the stone away, which was impossible to move. And I've been there in Israel. I've been to the tomb of uh, Golgotha Hill. Where Jesus' body laid there. I feel the anointing right now. I was there. I saw it with my own eyes. And I was inside the tomb of Jesus. And I didn't feel the presence of God. And I was very puzzled. I said, Lord, you were right there laying on that stone. From here to where like the man in the green. Or even you with the lady with the red. Green, red. Nice colors. Maybe from here, the lady with the red, yeah, closer. This, from here to, to the front of your chair. That's how far. And I was right there. Jesus himself laid there. And when I, when I was inside the tomb, I, 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 I wanted to feel, I wanted to feel something. I wanted to feel something and I felt nothing. I looked around, I thought, Lord, then somebody tapped me on the shoulder. There was nobody behind me. I was in there by myself, and somebody went like this, very hard, like almost pushed me. I turned around, there was nobody there. I couldn't see anyone. I said, oh, it's an angel. Oh, it's you, Holy Spirit. I don't know who, what. And they, I felt like a head, the presence of this angel point to the door and I read the sign on the door and it says for he is not here he is not here <laughs> I wanted to feel him there <laughs> it said he is not here for he is risen Woo! I thought I get it you didn't want to stay here you didn't want to waste time 
You want it to be resurrected and sit at the right hand of God and get on with the program and start saving mankind. You were always in a hurry. Jesus, when he wanted to rest, he went to pray on the mountain. He went very fast. Even when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he told his disciples, could you not watch for me for an hour? Why are you sleeping? Wake up, wake up, wake up. Isaiah 52 said, awake, O Zion, awake thou that sleepest. God is always in a hurry. Say that, God is always in a hurry. Say, God is always in a hurry. Because he respects time. Because he respects results. And he wants great things to happen for us. But he has great patience also, the Bible says. He waits long for the harvest as the husbandman because he's, he's waiting for the harvest of souls. So I would say to everyone, whatever it is you feel to do in life, you better start today. Lift your hands. Let me prophesy over you. Enough wasting time. Enough waiting for anything. God says, wait for no man. Lift your hands, all you preachers. Wait for no one. Well, you're waiting for what? You're waiting for who? Why are you always waiting? We think we're waiting on God, but God is standing back there like, he's like, like this, like an angry father. A little bit, a little bit. I don't, he loves us. But he's like, would you hurry up? Come on, I'm waiting. Did you ever have a, a child, a young person, or anybody, you ever have a parent or somebody in authority look at you like, hurry up. Think about God like that. We don't have time to waste. Lift your hands, let's pray. I want to speak this word, Father. Over every person under the sound of my voice, wherever you're watching this message, where are you that are here? Let time, the equation of time, be enhanced and advanced and quickened and accelerated from today that we wait for nothing anymore. Because God, you're waiting for us. You've already spoken to us what the dream is. It's in here and it's in here. You've already told us what you want us to do. I trust you've heard from God about your life. If not, enough. Let me prophesy. That's why I'm here. Let me teach. Let me preach. Let me prophesy. Let me pray. That's why I'm here. To, to speak this over you. That God will show you your divine mission from today. Lift your hands. You're going to have a visitation from the Lord. And he's going to talk to you about you. <laughs> One thing I noticed about people. They always want to pray for the nation. They always want to cry and repent for other people. They want to talk about other people. They want to gossip about other people. They want to concern themselves with everybody else. The Lord says, stop all that and concern yourself with yourself. Lift your hands. From today, I'm going to meditate on what it is God wants me to do. I have a responsibility. I have a calling. I have something I have to get done. I can't wait anymore. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't stay disorganized. I can't stay unorganized. And I can't be in the company of people that are going nowhere. I need to find people that want to run. They want to run fast. They want to move into God's purpose. Lord, connect it all together in Jesus' name. I prophesy over every person. You're going to have a personal visitation from the Holy Spirit. I scheduled it here from this platform right now. I schedule it for you. The schedule is being made by heaven. You're going to have a personal visitation. And God is going to talk to you. He's going to show you your responsibility. He's going to show you. How serious, how serious he is about the calling he put upon your life. Oh, I have so much to teach about, about this doctrine thing, but I'll continue as I can, as I can, uh, maybe in a, even in another message, but I, I want to speak this right now. Some people are you're really lost in the way. You're saved. You love God. You're in church. You're following the Lord somehow. But you don't know enough about yourself. 
I want to give you a scripture for that. There's a scripture in Song of Solomon, chapter 1. says very clearly, I've been made the keeper of the vineyards. I've been made a worker, pastor. I've been made one who serves and works. But my own vineyard I have not kept. My own life I have not worked on it, it, it enough. Huh? What a rebuke. What a loving rebuke. I'm sure from her feeling that conviction, she began to change things. Lift your hands. Now, there's many principles, many principles. Just lift a hand to the Lord. Say, Father, please talk to me. Please help me. Please, please. I, I feel like this month right now can't close before we go into another dimension of things. The year is coming to an end. The election in America is coming up. Very crucial things are happening in the world. But the Lord wants to help you. Put your hand on yourself. Say, the Lord wants to help me. Say, the Lord wants to help me. He wants to help me. My life is very important to him. My life is very important to people. My life is very important to the world. Now, sometimes when you say that, it sounds like you're just dealing with self, you know? In the church, people teach a lot about uh, dying to self. Very true. Both, you see, there are parallel truths here. One is you need to be a servant. When you serve, you give yourself up. You give your rights up. Your time is not yours. Your labor is not yours. Your obedience is not yours you, you, I mean not it doesn't belong just to you it belongs to others because you're serving a servant is just that until he becomes promoted to be doing something else <clears throat> but even in the midst of serving we still have to work on ourselves. there's a great motivational teacher named Jim Rohn his last name is R-O-H-N Jim Rohn you can look him up he said, the best investment you can make in the world is in yourself. Developing yourself. Why did God talk about the attributes of the Holy Spirit being knowledge, wisdom, and understanding? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lift your hand to the, to the Lord. Say, Father, fill my mind. Put your hand on your head. Fill my mind and my heart. Put your hand on your heart. Put your hands over your eyes that you can see. Put your hands on your ears that you'll hear the right things. Put your hands on your heart that you'll understand from today in a new way. It's a prophetic grace. You know, when I speak, it just goes out and touches people. And, and the Lord's going to confirm this with signs following. How many want to be very successful? in your life in your business let me see your hand how many would like to be very rich in life how many people are tired of being stuck and poor and struggling and needing money and you don't know where it is lift your hands i'll tell you you can find it if you work on yourself enough in the call of god god will promote you and i want to tell you where promotion comes from Promotion doesn't come just from prayer or church attendance or prayer or sacrifice, even obedience to certain things alone. Uh, promotion comes from management. When you're able to manage yourself, I want to help you. You 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 uh, you're, you're dropping off. Come on, catch this fire. Catch this fire, because I'm, put your, stretch your hands out toward me. I'll drop the mic and I'm gone. Give me a response or I'm leaving. Stretch your hands out toward me. Do it. Catch this grace. Catch this grace. Stretch your hands out toward me. Say, Father, I really need this. I need your power. I need your wisdom. I need your understanding. I could feel your heart when you're saying, I could feel it. See, the atmosphere is changing. I could feel it. I could feel it. I need power to understand things. 
Say it. I need power to understand things. Oh, yes. And this is, uh, this is the key to success. Number one, you discover who you are in God. Lift your hand again to the boss and say, Father, please show me everything about me. You, you might be preaching. You, you know you're called to be a pastor. Wonderful, you're doing it. You may be called to be an evangelist. Wonderful, you're doing it. You may be called to be in business or to have a certain job or to raise a family. That's great. You're doing it already. But there are specific things in the call that you, we need God to talk to us about. Let me tell you, the greatness of a man or a woman is not their similarity to another. It's the greatness. The greatness is from their uniqueness. God wants to make you like nobody else. Like nobody else. When they see you, they have never seen one like you. I know when people see me, I'm very unusual. And, 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 and I get into things and, and I'm carrying the presence and the grace and the glory of God. They've never, you've never seen anybody like me, I can assure you. You can look all over the nation. You can look all over Africa. You can look all over America. Europe, everywhere. You, you've not seen anybody like me. Because I'm so much developed in the calling, I know specifically who I am, what I'm doing, what I'm called to do. <clears throat> and you need to be like that. Now you four ladies have a white thing on your head, yeah? One, two, three, four. Right? You have a white thing on your head. Who's the best one of all of you? Even though when we look, you, we might see some similarity. How are you different? My sister, how are you different than her? And how are you different than her? Only by knowing who you are. Let's pray. Let's pray for 30 seconds. When I see someone that's been made by God in the fire, when I see someone that's very unique and very powerful, I know it cost them a lot to get there, but I know they also took time to pray about who they are. So I challenge you. Don't continue every day doing everything just the way you've been doing. Stop along the way and say, Father, show me me. Show me who you've ordained me to be. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. You want to stand up? You want to stay sitting? You can do however. Let's pray. I want us to pray in the Holy Ghost. Guess who we're praying for right now? For yourself. Put your hand on yourself right now. And say, Lord, I can't go another day without knowing more about who you've called me to be. I need to know today. Visit me. Pray a desperate prayer. I pray a prayer of fire that you'll touch my life. And Father, all that you've ordained for me, I will achieve it all. In the name of Jesus, I will not miss one thing. And let's pray, Father. Let's pray, Father. I apologize to you for wasting time. Everything that I didn't do that I was supposed to do. Please forgive me, Lord. I want to make sure I stay with you forever. I never want to drift away from you. I want you to keep me right in the palm of your hand and never let me go. Never ever let, let me go. And Father, anything that I've done wrong in your eyes, please forgive me right now and cleanse me from all unrighteousness and it'll be as far away from me as the east is from the west. I'm clean, I'm clean. I, I feel the presence of the Lord right now coming. I'm in your presence forever. 
and I'm going to do what you've ordained. Lord, let the atmosphere shift in here. I just see the angels coming in here right now with packages of gifts and powerful blessings. New fire, new mantles, new anointing, new grace coming on people. Lift your hands right now. Right now, the Holy Ghost just walked in here, and I see the angels lined up along the back. There's a visitation happening right now. I have to go in a few minutes. I'm heading to another event, but I'll tell you, the Lord is doing something right now. Lift your hands right now. If I'm different than everybody else, and you say so, I take that as a compliment. Amen. And many of us have had people to make us shout, but God wants to send people to make you think. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Touch her with fire in Jesus' name. And every devil, come out in Jesus' name. <sighs> Lift your hands to the boss right now. And say, Father, I'm your soldier. I'm yours. Take control of my life. Take charge of my life. I give my life to you. I give my life to you, my Father. Everything about me belongs to you. Nothing for myself except that which you've ordained i must fulfill your will i must fulfill your purpose i must get it done before the last day before the trumpet blows before we're caught up i don't want to go with regret i want to go with fruit jesus said in john 15 16 he said, I want you to bear fruit, and I want your fruit to remain. I want you to be fruit producers, proof producers of powerful results. And I love the principle, what you make happen for another, God will make happen for you. Ephesians 6, 8. Whatever you do good for another man, the same the Lord will do back for you. The Lord says, so, 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 reap, 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 give yourself, operate in my anointing. Lift your hands right now. Pastor, the fire of God's going to touch people. I'm going, but Jesus isn't leaving. He's going to remain, and the Holy Ghost is going to follow. God's going to follow you around and shake your life. You preachers, you're going to see this. God's going to shake you until what he's ordained is fully manifested in this season of time. There's no other season to wait for. It, the season is now. The time is now. Boy, I feel that. I feel the presence of the Lord right now here. Parashaka. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Korashaka. Everybody lift your voice and pray for a minute. Close your eyes and pray. Come on, some of you don't even pray. Do you pray? Lift your hands and pray right now. I know we shout, we dance, we scream, but do you pray in tongues? You, yeah, thank you, sister. She got on her knees. She's serious. This lady's serious. God, you touch her. She, she's one of many. She's one in the house that takes this thing. She just turned around and got on her knees and said, I'm praying. I'm praying over this. I love that. Let's pray right now. Come on. Let, let's turn this into a prayer session right now. Father, not one more day will I live without what you've ordained. All the wealth, all the treasures, all the success, all the help, all the people, all the properties, all the vehicles, all the aircraft, all the, the equipment and operations, international television, media, broadcasting, publishing, the printed page, to, to the ends of the earth, multitudes of millions and millions of people under the sound of our voice. Father, whatever is limiting and blocking the way, it's being broken in the name of Jesus. Somebody might consider this a big church. I don't. This is a very small church right here. Let me tell you. I see that iron wall back there. I said, what is that? Knock it down. Or oh, there's another, maybe there's another building there. Find another place for thousands of people. Praise the Lord. Everything in God's economy is big. Everything in God's move is big. My friend, Dr. Paul Leneche in Abuja, Nigeria, has the largest church on planet earth. It seats 100,000 people inside the church and it's not made with uh, materials that we see around many places here. It's like a palace. I don't know how many hundreds of millions of dollars were spent on building it. The land alone, the building alone, why? Because the man's in touch with heaven. Lift your hands. You could do that too. Not the same thing.
but something in your line of work. Lift your hands. Every door closed against your employment. I open it right now. Every door closed uh, against your business. Every foul word spoken by evil, hateful people. I reverse it back upon them in the name of Jesus. Every witchcraft, every uh, limitation, every demonic oppression that's come upon your life to stop your progress. I break it right now. Every sickness, every disease, come out. Come out of them in Jesus' name. Be broken and be set free. If you need new body parts, you need new eyes, new lungs, uh, new organs, new whatever, God's going to strengthen you from your head to your toe. Isaiah 40, 31, he's going to renew your strength uh, like a young person. Lift your hands right now. I don't care your age. You could be 80 years old. You'll feel like you're 40 or 30. Number, age is just a number. Myself, I will live long and declare the glory of God. I will live long. With long life, he will satisfy me and show me his salvation. Psalm 91, 16. And I will experience eternity with him in strength. Remember Joshua and Caleb. Caleb said, I'm 85 years old, but I feel like a 40-year-old man. I can still take the mountain. Remember those in the, in the, in the earlier, uh, Samuel or wherever it was, Judges. I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. I'm strong like a young person. Everything in me is rejuvenated by the presence of God. Let me tell you, when you're full of the Holy Ghost, the devil has no place to live in your life. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, the devil has no place in you. Nothing he can do there. Lift your hands. Keep praying. I want to hear somebody praying. This is good exercise. We move. We move around the city. We move around the town. We go here. We go there. But how much are we exercising the spiritual muscles? That's what Dr. Paul Inesche did. You know what he told me? And he told other people. He said, he said, he said, uh, he was praying five hours a day. And the Lord said, pray seven hours a day. <laughs> you, you think pray, I pray five hours a day, pastor. Five hours? Who prays five hours? I have to confess and repent myself. I pray without ceasing. I go around the clock. Sometimes I don't sleep at night. I'm always meditating. I'm always praying. I'm always listening to God. Yes, but do I pray straight five hours? Sing a song, worship, dance, pray in tongues more. Five hours in a day. Who does that? Amen. Be delivered and set free in the Holy Ghost. Who does that? And then God says, God didn't say, very good, son. You're doing well. He said, pray more. And that prayer life birthed that world-shaking empire and enterprise. Lift your hands. I hope you're getting me. From today, you'll go home. The atmosphere will be different and you'll want to move. Today, you'll start to get disturbed that you don't have your own vehicle to drive. From today, you'll be disturbed that you don't have a great source of income. You're going to get it. Today, from today, the, you'll knock and the door will be open to you. Today, from today, good people will show favor to you. New money will come. New friends will come. New success will come. New open doors will come. New things will come into your life. I'm prophesying. You're going to see it. This is what the Lord wants for us. Never to be slow, never to stay the same, never to be stuck. <laughs> well, that's good. Hey, that's good. That's good preaching right there. Say, I'm never to be slow. I'm never to be stuck. I'm never to be limited. I'm never to be sad. I'm never to be broke. I'm never to be wondering about what to do. I will always know what to do. Put your hand on your head again. Say, Father, fill this mind of mine. 
with your wisdom. Put your hand on your heart. Say, Lord, fill this heart of mine with your glory. Let me always know what to do next. For this, I want to tell you, there's only one thing in life you need to know all the time is what to do next. What to do next. What to do now. And I, pray, I, I prophesy over this house and everybody that's watching from everywhere you're watching. From today, your, mind, your, your life is going to be flooded with open doors. Lift your hands. Flooded with new... Clap your hands for Jesus. It's all right. Flooded with new ideas. Flooded with new friends. Flooded with new money. Flooded with new opportunities. Flooded with expansion of your vision. Flooded with everything that God has ordained for you. I prophesy this. In the name of the mighty Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Son of the living God. Yeshua HaMashiach Ben David. Jesus the Messiah of the house of David. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. Let's worship him for one minute right now. Lift our hands. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the Everlasting Father. He's the Mighty God. He's the Prince of Peace. Uh, he's the Day Star. He's the Day Spring. He's the Rose of Sharon. Yes. He's the Lily of the Valley. He's the fairest of 10,000. He's the Bright of the Morning Star. He's the Bishop and Overseer of our souls. Uh, He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the faithful, amen, and the true. He's the rider on the horse. He's the victorious king of glory. He's the resurrection and the life. He's the bread of life. He's the great shepherd. Lift your hands and worship him right now. Father, every door you've ordained for your people to walk through, let the door remain open wide and let the invitations come. And every door that you don't want them to walk through, let it be closed because it's not your will that they go through that. Protect us. Protect us as we walk. But Father, let everything to be done in order, in power, in speed, in excellence. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and say, I receive all that right now. I receive all I receive that right this now. whole message right now. I receive all that. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It is mine. It is mine. From today. From today. My life changes. My life changes. Forever. I'm leaving the past behind. I'm leaving the past behind. And I'm going forward into the vision of God. I'm going forward into the vision. In of Jesus' God. name. I'm Thomas Matthew the Ford. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. I love you. God bless you, everybody. Come on, let's give Jesus a shout right now. Hallelujah! Woo! All right, we'll see you all again. We'll see you all again. Blow me a kiss. Ah, can I have one? I want to feel some love right now. Come on, show me some love. Blow me a kiss. Whoa, 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 whoa. Woo, that's good. I feel it. I feel it. Let's, now let's give Jesus one as we're going. Wow! We love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. All right. Gioni Jema, Usiku Mwema, Buona Sefiwe, Mugu Nemwema, Hallelujah, Upadakiwe. brethren in psalms 119 105 the bible says your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path truly god has sent prophet dr thomas manton the fourth to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations thus brothers and sisters in christ i urge you just as the bible says in matthew 10 41 whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet, will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.